you asked for the voice of God, and that's what I'm going to be sharing on this morning is hearing the voice of God. Genesis 1, 2 through 3, the first time we begin to hear the voice of God. And the Bible says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. I love it that the Spirit of God has always been with us. And we see and hear the, the voice of God, and just like he spoke into creation, he can speak into the darkness areas, the dark areas of your life, or maybe the void areas of your life. God is still speaking like he did into creation. He speaks into our lives like he's spoken to creation. He said, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God's able to do that in your individual areas of depression, of anxiety, problem situations, conflict, relationships. He's able to speak that light into your life. God is still speaking. He never stops speaking. Maybe we just quit listening because God still speaks. It's like a AM radio. Sometimes you have to tune it in, get in the right position, lift up the antenna, tap into the frequency. But there is a sound that's above all the sounds. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a bunch of sounds out there today. There's a bunch of voices and there's a, a bunch of noise. But there is a sound that's above all those sounds and it is the very voice of God. And guess what? He wants you to know it. He wants you to hear it. He wants you to be uh, uh, acquainted uh, to his voice. Abraham heard it. Moses heard it. Noah heard it. And he wants you to hear it. And Jesus echoes it in John 10, 27, code red. It says this, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear hear my voice. If you haven't heard the voice of God before, I got news for you. I can, I think you, I can humbly help you hear the voice of God. I'm going to do a test on you in just a minute to show you that you can hear the voice of God. That word in the Greek voice is this. If you look it up in the Greek, it's phone. My sheep hear my phone. You might just have been picking up the wrong phone. You might be picking up the Apple phone. Whatever kind you like. But God says you need to pick up his phone. Guess who's on the other end of his phone? He's on the other end of his phone. And the Bible says, my sheep hear my phone. We can hear his voice. So my sheep hear my voice. It's it, it, it's vital that you belong to him. And, and I know that I'm preaching to the most of the choir, but there may be people in here that doesn't know Christ. It's vital if you're going to know the voice of God that you belong to him. And it goes on to say, and I know them. It's vital that he knows you. Make yourself available for him to know you. And then it goes on to say, and they follow me. It's so vital that you follow him. Being a a Christian, and in the New King James, it's mentioned Christian, Christians about 10 times. But it mentions disciples about 290 sometimes. God doesn't want you just to be a Christian. God wants you to be a disciple, ones that follow him and know his voice. There's sounds, and there's voices, and there's news, and there's fear, and there's noise that can drown out the voice of God, and you begin hearing the wrong sounds and the wrong voices, and wrong sounds and wrong voices will lead you to do wrong things. I promise you that. I don't care who you are. If you continue to hear the wrong noise and the wrong voices and the wrong sounds and not being able to decipher what the difference is, it will cause you to do the wrong things. For those who say they cannot hear the voice of God, we're going to do something right now because I'm going to prove to you there's not a person in this room that cannot hear the voice of God. You ready, you, you ready for me to prove that to you? How many of you ready to hear the voice of God? Ready to hear the voice of God? You ready? Here we go. You're going to hear the voice of God right now. 
Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right. J.O., you just shared a scripture. Right. I just shared the voice of God to you. If you want to hear the voice of God, you have to read the voice of God. Every person in this room can hear the voice of God because the number one place that you should hear the voice of God faithfully every day is God's word. When you read God's word, guess what you hear? You hear the voice of God. When you're praying, he hears you. When you're reading, you can hear from him. I'm going to tell you probably in the last 15 years since we planted the church, I might have missed reading the word of God maybe 15 times, maybe six times. I don't even remember really, but maybe six times. Jay, are you bragging? I am not bragging. I am just breathing because if I'm going to live a godly life, if I'm going to breathe, if I'm going to have a walk of the spirit, I have got to be in God's voice, in his phone. Listen, picking up his phone and not all the other phones around me. Jesus said this. He said it so beautifully and so powerfully. Actually, Jesus quoted from the Old Testament and he said this in Luke 4, 4. But Jesus answered and said, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. See, You think that you can live by bread? I got news for you. It's impossible. You cannot live by bread alone. You can't live life to it. You might survive. You might walk around. You might work. But you're not going to live life to its fullness on only bread. You have to hear the voice of God. You got to be in the word of God. It will change your life every day. When we lived in Vancouver, Washington, as I attempted to, to, to begin to share with you about hearing the voice of God, I said in my own life, I said, the only way I can teach somebody how to hear the voice of God is, is how I hear the voice of God. I can't hear the voice of God for you. I can prophesy and I can tell you what I think God's speaking to you. At the end of the day, you have to hear the voice of God. So I said, I'm just going to share with you some of the ways that I've heard the voice of God that's been life-changing destiny leading, purpose fulfilling in our lives. So back in Vancouver, when we lived there, I was on staff at City Harvest Church. Pastor Bob is my pastor. And I I, I felt by the spirit of God that we were going to live there seven years. One of my friends who um, I'd given him a Christian book and and, uh, you know, he read it and he was a great guy where he is spiritually. I'm not exactly sure with this dude. Very sweet, sweet guy. But he said something to me one day. He said, because I had told him I thought we were going to live there seven days, uh, seven years. And then all of a sudden, it's seven years and we're moving. And he was blowed away that, that we could actually pinpoint that we were going to be there seven years. Well, the only reason why we could ever pinpoint anything is because of the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's absolutely the only way. In 05, 2005, I was in the Word of God. I was in the Word of God. East side, I was in the Word of God. South side, I was in the word of God. West side, I was in the word of God. Why do you say that, Jay? Because you gotta hear, you gotta be in the word of God to hear the word of God. You to, to, to hear God's voice. I think that you have to be in his voice. So I'm reading it, and it's in Jeremiah 1:10, and it says, See, I have set this day, I've this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root up, to root out, to pull down. To destroy and to throw down, and listen to these five words, to build and to plant. And when I read that on January of 05, to build and to plant, I heard the sound above all the sounds. It wasn't just words. I knew 
that I heard the voice of God while I was in the word, while I was on the phone. I heard his voice. I heard the sound. I knew what it meant. I knew. I, 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 take it to, I took it to my wife, Holy Spirit number two, and I said, sweetheart, I think God's calling us. I think God's calling us to go build, a, to plant, build a church, to build, to move, to build, and to plant. And it was the first time she was all in in that area. I mean, she's always, we've always been in it together to win it. But for this occasion, on this subject, she was all in. Those five words, to build and to plant. Over the seven years while we were in Vancouver, God was doing something undeniably in our lives because we would travel. I, 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 I worked at the church, but the first three years there, I just called paint, prophesy, and preach. I was doing whatever God called me to do, and I traveled a whole, whole lot. Traveled with a, 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 a theater called, uh, a Christian play called Eternity, and I uh, preached a lot. But there was one place that God continually brought us back to, I think 16 or 17 times throughout that time. And it was in the Spokane, eastern Washington area. So, so I go, go to Pastor Bob, and Pastor Bob says, Jay, where do you feel like God's having you plant the church? And I said, we feel like we're called to a region. You know, This is where God keeps bringing us in and out of. It's like a door has been opened. Everyone say doors. Doors are very vital when it comes to you hearing the voice of God. I'm not talking about Jim Morrison today. I'm talking about the voice of God doors. God can open doors that you can't open. He'll open a door. You better know that's the voice of God. He'll shut doors that no man can open. It's very important that he opens a door and don't you in the flesh kick open doors because if you kick open the door, guess what you have to do? You have to pry that door open and keep it open on your own. It will wear you out when you're trying to keep a door open on your own when God has shut it. I'm going to show you in Revelation, all the way in Revelation, Genesis, it talks about doors. I'm going to, talk, I'm going to read a scripture out of uh, Revelations that says this, I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door. Say that with me, an open door. And no one can shut it. There are doors that God opens for you, church. You need to listen really good. It is the voice of God, and no man can shut it. 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 Because God opened that door. You need to be attentive to that, sensitive to it, and walk through that door. Because that door is the door of your destiny. But then there are doors that God will shut. Genesis 7, 16, talking about Noah, talking about the ark. See, I think the ark is like a, a typology of the church of the New Testament because you got on the ark and you were safe. You got, and it was for more than other people, but they didn't get on it. It was for more. It was for the animals. You got to the ark. You got on the car, ark and it was a safe place. And that's the way the church should be. You come into the church. It's a safe place where you can grow and know God and live. And it says this. So those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. How I many you know when God shuts a door, you can't open it? I don't care. Get your jackhammer. Get your pry bars. Go ahead and kung fu it. Kick, drop kick. I don't care. You can't open it if God shuts it. Why do you say that? Because you need to know that God, God can speak to you just like I'm talking to you right now, but he doesn't have to speak to you that way. He talks uh, uh, through lots of different avenues. Like I can hear it in a bonfire cracking. Come on. It sounds like grandma telling me where I came from. You can hear God in many fashions and one of them is through doors. You, you need to be Knowing that, because God has used doors in my life. Well, Pastor Bob says, well, J.O., I, 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 I know that you got a region, but you need to get a city. We're city churches. You, you need to get a city. Where city is God bringing you to? And so we have thought about the region. And, and so one day, Radine and I, and I don't even know, I think the kids was with us. We came over because we thought maybe it's Liberty Lake. We're seeking God's face, man. We are seeking, we're asking, we are knocking, we are seeking God. Where? Because I tell you, if you're going to plant a church, you better know that you hear from God. Because whatever you do, all hell's going to hit you. 
But if you know that you hear from God, you can just keep walking through hell. But you better know that you heard from God. If you ain't heard from God, whoo, I tell you what, fear and all of a sudden doubt will flood you. But when you hear from God, so we drive over here, we look at Liberty Lake. We're like, okay, maybe it's Liberty Lake. Lord, please lead us by your Holy Spirit. We pull into Liberty Lake. We, we looked at some houses there around the lake, and we grabbed the newspaper. It's called The Splash. Anybody ever heard of The Splash before? Splish, splash, I was taking We grabbed The Splash, and on the front of the newspaper, right on the front page, it said, MFI Church being planted, da-da-da, uh, Liberty Lake. We're like, we're, we're part of MFI. And we had no clue that there was a church being planted there out of the same organization that we were part of. You know what that meant to me? It meant, oh man, praise God, you shut that door, God. That's a shut door. I don't need to even look at another inch of ground in Liberty Lake. We ain't moving to Liberty Lake. There's not a chance, a snowball in hell, we're going to Liberty Lake because that door is shut. And he spoke to me through the splash. Oh, you need to have ears to hear. He'll speak to you through your three years old if you shut up and listen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You're like, Ugh. my kid just said that. Well, yeah. And it's the voice of God, voice of God. And so got invited to do a wedding right after that down south uh, in Boise area. We were staying with Radine's sister, brother-in-law in Nampa. Wasn't it Nampa, sweetheart? And I was in the word that morning. I was in the word. <laughs> I was in the, somebody go catch that today and that's okay. I was in the word. I was in the word. I wasn't in the word for the wedding. I was in the word. I was in the word and I was reading a chapter, just my daily devotions, Deuteronomy chapter eight. I began to read it. Even as I was writing the sermon, you guys, I felt those old feelings of whenever I heard clearly the voice of God and how it impacted me. I just began to weep when I was writing the sermon because of the power of hearing God's voice. And so I'm, I'm seeking God. God, where are you having this church plant? I know that you have a land. you got a city for us, but we got to go to the right place. And, and God, we're just seeking your face. And I don't remember all of my prayers, but I just kind of stay real and just cry out to God, please lead us. And I'm in the Word. And I'm reading Deuteronomy 8. Here's a little bit of it. And just see if you can picture this with me because I could picture it clearly. And it said, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. How many of you think Coeur d'Alene is a good land? If you don't think it's a good land, you should move. That's not a word from the Lord. That's a word from J.O. This is a good land. This is the promised land, baby. Yeah. It's a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow over the valley and hills. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. In which you shall lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and whose, and out of the hills you can dig copper. And I heard copper. And it was like I heard heaven. And you'll probably never catch me without wearing copper. I got it on both of my hands right now. Because I heard so, you could say, J.O., we come to visit this church right here, y'all, and you built a church. You, you moved to here because of a word named copper. Listen, I can't explain how God works and his mysteries, but I will tell you what happened. I heard copper that day, and it changed my destiny. I, I said, Radine, do you mind reading this chapter? And she's, we we're in the backyard, I think, and she read the chapter. And I said, honey, what stands out to you in that whole chapter? The whole chapter, because it's a, it's a beautiful chapter. She said, copper. Woo. 
It's the voice of God. No longer my wife. It's the voice of God. And so we're there to do a wedding. And man, I just had this crazy encounter with God. Deuteronomy 8 and, 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 and the word copper. And, and so I, I don't know what to do other than just keep moving forward. And God, I, I, here we go. Copper, I, I, don't, I don't know. Don't know what I don't know. And we go do the wedding. Beautiful couple, man. We knew them when they were young. They were in the youth church. Two virgins. I mean, just awesome young people. They're getting married at a at a uh, old traditional Baptist church downtown. Boys, we do the wedding, and it's beautiful. It's it's awesome. And then afterwards, most people have went to the reception, and I just come walking out, and there's just a few people there, and there's this, a gentleman standing there, a handsome guy, and he says, "Hey, Jo, do you remember me?" And I go, "I kind of totally remembered him, not." Not fully, and I, I knew his, uh, his daughter was in our youth church, or, or, and, and I just started connecting with him a little bit. And, and uh, I said, sir, I, I never knew what you did for a living. I said, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a geologist. <laughs> Copper. <laughs> geologist. Oh, J.O., that just happened, Chance, right there. You just happened, you, copper, geologist. How many times have you done a wedding and you hear copper in the morning and you run into a geologist in the evening? <laughs> I only know two geologists in my entire life, you guys. I said, sir, you're a geologist? Yeah. I said, can I ask you a question? Now, I'm not even thinking wedding. I'm, not think, I'm thinking copper. And I said, I said, where would you, can I ask you where you would find copper? He says, oh yeah, you would find it in Kellogg in the hills of Coeur d'Alene. I went, Whew. I said, hold up, brother. Would you, let me go get, can, can I go get my wife? I ran. I'm like jumping. I'm like, I know you don't understand this. I know you don't understand this. I don't expect you to understand. I went and got ready and I said, sir, would you please tell my wife what you just told me? He goes, yeah. You find copper and Kellogg in the hills of Coeur d'Alene. See, it's no longer a geologist. It's the voice of God. It's the voice of God. That's how Heart of the City Church was planted. There was other things, don't get me wrong, because I, I knew the name of the church years before we planted it, but I had no clue what Coeur d'Alene meant. We're walking downtown where uh, uh, the old city hall was, and there was a big heart on the front window. Coeur d'Alene, if you're new to Coeur d'Alene, it means heart of the all. And it was like, wow. When you tap into the beautiful sound above all the sounds. Because you want to be in the will of God. There's a good, pleasing, and perfect will. When you plant a church, you want the perfect will of God. Because you know the devil doesn't like you and he doesn't like churches and he wants to destroy you. It's the voice of God. It's the voice of God. Elijah had prophesied. And he prophesied that there wouldn't be rain until the word, till he except at his word. And then the Lord sent a word to him and said, uh, get out of here. And, 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 and he left. And all of a sudden now he's in a uh, kind of a confrontational situation. He goes before the people of God and he says, how long will you falter between two opinions like this? Are you going to serve Jesus? Or are you going to serve Baal? And you know what they did? They just was quiet. When God when, when, when somebody asks you a question like that, you can't stay quiet. And it, it, I, I think it really bothered Elijah. And so he calls out the prophets. There's total 850 prophets of Baal and Asher. He calls them out. He's like, hey, it's on like Donkey Kong. You go, you go ahead and call on your God and do your thing, and then I'm going to call on my God. And they did their thing. They ran around cutting themselves and, and uh, you know, calling and dancing. All we I don't know how weird they were dancing. They were doing whatever they did to call on a God that wasn't going to show up. 
because it wasn't a God at all. And no one showed up in Elijah's life. Where is he at? On the toilet? If you study that, you'll see that. And he's like, okay, y'all back off. Nobody showed up on your behalf, and now it's my turn. And he begins to call on God. He says, before, I want you to soak the altar, soak the sacrifice, just water, flood it like last week. How do you know if something's full when it's overflowing? And, and all this, it's just full. And he calls on God. And God, you know how he speaks this time? With fire. God can speak through fire. He spoke to Moses through a burning bush, except it didn't burn up. And the, the, the fire licked up the water and the sacrifice and everything. And then he slayed 450 prophets of Baal. And then something took place. Other voices got involved. The king was a king named Ahab, and he was married to a crazy lady. It's important who you marry. That's a prophetic word right there, yo. You marry a crazy lady or a crazy dude? Well, Jezebel was her name. And he sent, he sent, she sent a letter to Elijah. This guy just had the most amazing spiritual mountaintop experience. Fire from heaven. Slayed these false prophets. And he gets one little cheesy letter from Jezebel. What you did to them, I'm going to do to you. And he listened to the voice. He listened to the sound, the noise. It wasn't the phone of God. It was a deceptive voice with a spirit connected to it. And you know what he did? He went running for his life. When you listen to wrong voices, you will make wrong choices. He went running for his life. When you listen to wrong voices, you will make wrong choices. There he is under a tree, now suicidal. This dude that just was used so mild, he's suicidal. He's hopeless and he's depressed. He's talking to God this way. God, just take my life. God gives him instructions and he keeps moving and he's fasting forever. And, and before you know it, he's at a cave. Rating was reading a magazine yesterday of a 12-year-old, was it 12-year-old little boy who hung himself? I can tell you, I don't know the whole backstory, but I can tell you that 12-year-old was listening to the wrong voices. And parents, you need to have talks with your kids. It's okay to find out where they are. Whatever they've been through, whatever it's like from COVID at school or whatever's going on in your family, have conversations with your kids. And so he's in, a, he's, in a, he's in a cave, and something very unique about a cave is a cave is dark and very, very quiet. You ever been in a cave? I've been in a cave before. Kind of moist and dark and very quiet. And the Bible says, and there he went into the cave and spent the night in that place, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came to him. No matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, believe me today, God's word can get to you. He wants to speak into your circumstance and your situation. And God said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And I felt like there's a word for somebody in here today. What are you doing here, Mary? What are you doing here, Phil? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm not talking about here in church, but I'm talking about in your spiritual condition. What are you doing there? He wants to send his word to you. He wants to touch your life. I find that in a very stressful situation under enormous weight, under fears and anxiety, it's very hard for me to hear God's voice. I hear everything, my soul, my voice. But he had a minute where he was in a dark, quiet cave. And right in that moment, the Bible says in verse 11 and 12, go and stand out on the mountain. He's, God's talking to Elijah. Go stand out on the mountain. And the Lord told him, and Elijah stood there, and the Lord passed by. 
and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. And it was a terrible blast that the rocks was torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. There's all kinds of wind blowing around us, you guys. Winds of doctrine and all kinds of strange things. And, and you better ask yourself, is God really in this? Because he wasn't in that wind. And it was a strong wind. And then the Bible says after the wind, there was an earthquake. I've been in some earthquakes. I used to live in Northern California, yo. Six point eight or nine, seven point and seven two, three earthquakes in one day. Electric lines. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. Why? Why a whisper? I'm going to show you. whisper you got to lean in why whisper you got to get close I know you could hear it on the mic but let me tell you right now if I didn't have a mic you would never know only Craig would have known you know why Craig knew because he he came close he leaned in he's like Elijah had to get close. <laughs> and he gave him a plan for his life. I'm not done with you yet, Elijah. You're going to go anoint a guy, crazy, wild guy named Jehu. And you're going to anoint Elisha. And you're going to, you got great and mighty exploits ahead of you. But he would never knew unless he leaned into the whisper. This is a season where you better be careful with all the winds. And with all the fire and all the earthquake and all the loudness and all the noise, because there is a sound above all the sounds, the voice of God that he longs for you to listen to and, and to lean into. I want to I give you some practical advice before I close today. This has really helped me in my life. I learned years ago from a pastor named Ken Wilde. I'm going to use this kind of like as a pan today. I'm going to take off one of my copper rings. This is like a piece of gold. If you want to hear the voice of God, a lot of people will come to me and they don't ask for counsel sometimes. They just tell me what they're doing. It's like, you mean to tell me you are moving your whole family to do this in a new job? And, and they didn't, they just, they're informing me. They're not looking for counsel. And you don't, have to, you don't have to ask me. But if you have a life-changing decision you're going to make, you shouldn't do it on your own. It's like panning. We're not panning for gold right now. We're panning for God. We're panning for the voice of God. The number one way that you should hear from the voice of God, number one, is the word of God. You have to have a word that you can stand on. Do you know how many times I've stood on Deuteronomy 8, copper? Do you know how many times I've read Deuteronomy 8? That is a word from God that I've got. No matter what comes, I have that word, number one. Number two, you need a voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift to you. The Holy Spirit is the promise to you. He lives inside of you. He's the spirit of truth. He's counselor, guide, and comforter. He wants to lead you. You need to hear from the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, they're always going to be in agreement. Number three, you need to hear from Holy Spirit. Number two, if you have a God-fearing husband or wife, 
they've got to be in agreement with you. You can't be so headstrong to go, this is what we're doing, woman. Come on, woman. You need to chillax. Get in the cave and listen. One word of God, two. Holy Spirit, three. Your spouse, four. Godly counsel. Godly men and women who love you. Not yes men. Not your buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget the yes man stuff. Godly men and women. Number five. Let the peace of God lead you. If you look up that word peace, you'll find that it is the umpire. You can't buy peace. You can't manipulate peace. You can't work it. You got it or you don't. Let the peace of God lead you. And the last one is this. Does it make sense? Does it make good sense? Don't let that one be your first one. (laughs) Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will straighten your path. That's the last one you listen to. Are you with me? If you do that, I think you're going to pan for gold and you're going to get the voice of God. 